Designing websites and designing award-winning websites are two completely different games so, and one more complex than the other with different processes and different ways of thinking about the final product. Let's dive together into the process of making an award-winning experience and let's see how to go from this to that. It's going to be fun, follow me. Holy sh so this is our starting point, it doesn't look that nice, uh, but it's more like a client that sent us uh, images, copy, title, uh, etc. So it's like a real world scenario. And don't make the mistake to design right away, but firstly we have to answer two fundamental questions. Who and how? The who is going to be our actual target, so the people that we want to reach out with our websites, for example teenagers uh, or people that have a lot of money or normal people. And this is the first crucial point to take in consideration. The how on the other side is how we want to make our target get feels when it comes to our website. Two simple questions, but if you don't find the answers, you're going to break your design. In this specific case, our who or target is going to be people that are not looking for normal experiences, but they want to see and have a truly different experience. Moving on to the second question, the actual look and feel that we want to give to the experience. Have you ever dreamt about uh, you being in a film, the perfect trip, the perfect experience with your girlfriend, with your wife, or uh, maybe alone, but like you're truly in a film and this is basically the look and feel that I want to give to this website and experience. Now that we have decided our target and our look and feel that we want to achieve, let's create a mood board. For the ones of you that don't know what a mood board is, it's basically a collection of images that you found on the internet and you put them into your design to take them as references. For this project I want to go for example on Pinterest to find references and type for example uh, cinema posters and start looking for references and things that repeat over different concepts. For example what we can see the layout is almost the same on every single concept so we have a big text a title an image a big image and some text below with a small font size and some icons below definitely we want to keep that in mind and use it in our concept for example i take this image i click a copy image i go into figma and i take this image and i put it right here as a reference for this website what i have in mind is not a look and feel that is super high-end or super polished i want something that feels more like home if you well. So this is a reference for the layout but not for the feelings. To make something more warm we need to use a serif typeface and non serif typefaces. In this case this works better than the other one in terms of feeling. Take and copy the image again, I put it into Figma and these are the two references. And normally when you create a mood board and when I create a mood board I usually take 10 to 20 images but for the sake of this project which is not a real client project I just take these two images because I already have a clear vision of the concept. Now it's time to start playing the interesting game and playing with the elements. First of all, of course, we need a frame. So we create a frame. I usually use a 1920 by 1080, but you can choose whatever you want. And here we start thinking about our composition. Now we take my elements and I want to start with the image because it's going to be the biggest part of the concept and the most impactful thing that the user is going to see in the web page. First thing that I notice is that I don't want to use the white because in films the white is never used and I want to use the black. Usually in UI UX design you don't want to use a pure black but in this case if we want to achieve a film look I think that is the best thing to use. In this reference the image covers the entirety of the concept so I want to try to do the same thing for our web page. Now let's start playing with the content and with the title and the position and the composition of the content. So let's move on with the title and as we saw on Pinterest every single concept, almost every single concept has the text enter aligned. So let's make the same thing on our concept and place the text in the middle of our page and I don't want to change the font and the font size yet. I want to put these two paragraphs below the title to make these effects right here that we have on this composition and what a beautiful quality. Let's try to make the same thing and center align everything in our page. Now I can already see one huge problem that we have in this concept. In the reference that we took from Pinterest this is a poster so the image is always going to be the same but in our concept what if the client want to change the image? We encounter the problem of visibility and contrast for the text that are above the image. So we need to make sure that even if the background image changes, the visibility of the content is not going to change. So for this concept, having a background image is not the best thing to do. What's another concept that we can use in this page to make everything more visible? I don't know if you know that, but every single piece of video that is a cinematic and they want to be cinematic has some black bars at the top and at the bottom of the frame. So I want to replicate the same concept 
concept and idea in this web page to create some space for the content to make it always visible. So what we can do here is we can resize the image and cut it right here and right here and have to create some space at the top and at the bottom. Let's center the image because otherwise it looks horrible. And right now we are starting to see our look and feel that we wanted to achieve and we decided to achieve in our how. Now that we have created space for our content and we have these two black bars, let's see how we can place the content looking at our references. And as you can see, we have some text at the top, some text at the bottom, as always center aligned. The only element that I think that can remain in the middle of our page is going to be the title because of its dimensions. So let's start moving the paragraphs at the top and at the bottom of the page. One thing that I don't like is the text in one line. So let's shrink this down. Another thing that we can do is that we can change the font size to make it even smaller because right now it's too big. And let's center the actual paragraphs in the horizontal line. Now it looks way better than before and we are following the rules and the layout of these posters right here, even if we are starting to create our own concept. The tricky game is not to replicate what you see from other designers, but it's to make everything fits into your case. Now that we have the content placed in the positions that we want, it's time to change the typeface and the colors to give more personality to the concept. If you take a look at this reference or if you take a look at other references from the internet, you can see that the only font that is going to change is the one for the title. So we're going to choose one typeface for our title while we're keeping the same typeface that we have right now for the paragraphs. As we said, we want something that feels more like home and that's a warm feeling. So I will choose a serif typeface with some rounded shapes. And let's start playing around with all the typefaces that you have on your computer. I think that this one looks perfectly because uh, it has some rounded shapes and corners, uh, uh, yet uh, it's not uh, super playful or it doesn't look cheap. We still want to have uh, an high quality perception for our website. And remember guys, uh, don't confuse high end uh, with high quality. If a client, or in this case, uh, we said that we didn't want uh, a super high end uh, or polished look and feel, but that doesn't mean that we have to choose typefaces, uh, for example, script typefaces or something like that if you're not the look that you're looking for. And a real example can actually be the this typeface right here because unless your target is someone that is uh, really young or you're not looking for this vibe, this typeface and look uh, looks way cheaper than this one. So spending the time to find and choose the perfect typeface for your case uh, is 80% uh, of your look and feel. And if you want to know some resources where I found the typefaces and fonts, so let me know in the comments down below. Now we have the typeface, so we have the composition, uh, we need to change the color of the text. And luckily for us this already looks uh, really nice, uh, but let's change the color and find something more for our case. As we can notice, the image has some really nice warm tones, so let's try to pick some colors from the trees or from the car. I think that this works, but let's change the color just a little bit and tweak some settings right here in the HSL tab. This color works perfectly for our case. It's really warm, it has some warm feelings. So I think that this is a color that fits perfectly with the typeface and the background image right now. Obviously this is not a poster, but it's going to be a website. So in this case, we're going to have just the homepage and the menu button. To perfectly align everything, I'm going to create a layout grid with some with the columns and let's say 12 columns and 20 pixels margin. And if you wanna know more about grids and how to use them, let me know in the comments down below. Let's align the home page button right here at the edge and let's say uh, the same thing for the menu button at the right. This already looks uh, really nice, it's a really nice composition, it's super minimal and it has uh, the look and feel that we were looking for. And right now is where we see a clear division between uh, normal web pages and experiences uh, and uh, our winning experiences. This is already a nice design uh, if you want to have uh, a really nice uh, web page, but if we want to for example, win an award on this website, on the awards website, we need to be careful and to pay attention to every single detail of the page. I want to add some film grain or film texture. We said that we want to achieve a film look, so this works perfectly in this scenario. How to do it is extremely simple. I downloaded a film texture that I found on the internet and we're going to resize the texture to cover the entire web page. And now we are going to play with the blending modes. Usually the settings that work 
the best are soft light and screen, but we are going to see what works best in terms of contrast, color, saturation, etc. and change the settings as we go. Let's start with soft light and then, ah, it doesn't work because there is too much contrast, so let's change to screen. And I think that that works perfectly, it's perfect, it's absolutely beautiful. Let's change and put the menu uh, icon above the texture. As you can see guys, it's a completely different game and a completely different, different look and feel. And let's make a before and after, let's remove the texture. As you can see, these are two completely different websites, guys. The console on the right is a really nice website. There is nothing wrong with the console on the right, but with the console on the left, guys, we can already see and we can actually see that the concept tells a story. You can have a nice composition, you can have nice typefaces and colors, but if the concept and the web page and experience doesn't tell a story, it's just a really nice website. Of course, the design is not everything when we want to create an award-winning experience. We also need to have really nice animations that have the concept tells and speak for itself and tells the story as the user go throughout the website. But if you already have a really an awesome design, you already have done 90% of the work. And another example could be this concept. It's already really nice. It has a nice typeface, composition, a really nice photo, but it doesn't have the details that an experience needs to tell a story. And this is the same concept, but with way more details, guys, and this tells the story way more than this one does. For example, I wanted to create some rough edges on the navigation bar, on the image on the bottom. Here, I wanted to highlight the snowboard and reuse the shape on the bottom. So we can actually use the snowboard outline for particular for buttons, for call to actions, etc. And I wanted to use this line to continue this shape right here. And that also helps with the user experience and navigation because as soon as the user scrolls, I already know that the user is going to look at the right of the page. So I'm going to put the most important thing on the right of the page in the next section. So it's not just a matter of detail, but it's a matter of using the details to go throughout the website in a flawless way. By the way, guys, don't throw random stuff into your website just because you think that you're adding details are only things that help telling the story of the website. To help you with minimal design, I made a video on uh, the fundamental concepts to know for minimal design. So check out this video right here. If you found this video helpful, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.